Uh, it's the work, first men's world tour race has finished, which was Tour Down Under. And I don't really make much videos about it. I've been quite busy, but I decided to go through each of the climbing stages, all of the stages, kind of see like what numbers we're seeing for early doors. So the thing to remember in Australia, in Adelaide, sorry, um, in Tour Down Under, is generally hot. It wasn't actually that hot this year. Uh, and the stage is quite short. You see like 150K. Uh, and that a lot of people just don't care. Like a lot of the guys who are not Australian, if you look at like, obviously here at this stage especially like all the people who are in the top top 10 often are australian um or new zealand so they're obviously focused on a lot more so the level is kind of rogue like it is actually quite high but not always crazy so anyway we'll start off with the prologue so derek g uh is the first the fastest rider on strava again it's one of those situations where it doesn't really count because uh i don't think the prologue actually got everyone on it um, you can kind of see like 450 watts, kind of what you expect, but it was super sketchy. So it's kind of not really irrelevant, not really relevant what they actually did um, in the prologue. It was just like sort of stupid because of the rain, which was a shame. But anyway, that was the prologue. First stage was actually not too bad um, in terms of like, like effort. You can see it was a mildly hilly loop. Um, it, this is Ben O'Connor's. He's like the best rider who actually posts power data at the tour down. You can see there are some decent numbers here. like. 452 watts for two minutes is not insignificant, but it's not bonkers. The last climb was done at like five watts per kilo, but the last part was a little bit harder. And then it came into a bunch sprint, which brought Bauhaus one. So anyway, that was like that overall 280 normalized for three hours, 43. That is like outrageously cruisy for the professionals. I mean, the average 210 watts, like that is very relaxed. So yeah, not the hardest stage off the bat. Um, we then go on to stage two. Uh, which actually is where they, well, they nicked a comma used to have, um, or I was like second or third on that. Anyway, um, this again was kind of ridiculous. Like they went nuclear. So on like the actual segment here, Ben O'Connor did um, close to eight watts per kilo for three minutes. He still didn't actually get the comma. That was when Jay Vine and everyone else took away. So pretty high level. Um, if you actually look at the segment, you can see Marishman and Jay Vine uh, were way fast if we just do the from the saw pit where they actually turn on to the junction you can see they were like a good five six seconds quicker um than ben o'connor he so they were doing a was per kilo for three minutes which is which is pretty strong for sure especially towards the end of a stage it's kind of what you'd expect in mio de hui but mio de hui's race like less normally because it's like really easy and then like massive surge but again it was a decent stage this like not crazy crazy hard but Still, like, pretty impressive numbers for such early, so early on in the season. Um, but maybe not exactly what you'd expect uh, later on in the season. Again, this was, like, a decent climb as well. You can see here, like, 8 watts per kilo for 3 minutes. So it definitely was a harder stage than you might imagine. Um, but, yeah, that was kind of it. And then afterwards, it was just, like, kind of chaos chasing into the finish. But, yeah, pretty impressive numbers. Stage 3 really was, I'd say, the kind of nuclear stage. Jay Vine just went mental. He got the comp. On corkscrew, uh, again, corkscrew stage is always weird. It, it's surprisingly hard. Um, they went up Norton Summit as they always do, not too fast that today, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, like 22k an hour, 8% climb, like pretty mad. But I think on like the the steeper part, he he got the comb by a decent way. Like 21k an hour is is very quick. Um, you can see like if we go over to um, click on this year or this month, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you'll be able to see Ben O'Connor's time, which is like good watts per kilo, like seven watts per kilo Ben O'Connor did. Um, but he was, what, like 20 seconds down on Jay Vine. So Jay Vine's doing nuclear numbers, like stupid numbers for this kind of effort, like 7.4, maybe something like that, like really, really high level performance. Brian Kokar had a good ride as well. Um, we can look at his ride actually from the day after because that was pretty special. Um, so yeah, this was Ben O'Connor's file. If we look at this, like seven watts per kilo for six and a half minutes, they might not even be their race weight. That's one thing to think about on Norton Summit. They rode four and a half watts per kilo, so nothing crazy. And then it was kind of just like not super hard. It was decent, like harder than you'd expect, like 300 normalized almost. Um, and then yeah, the downhill was always absolutely mental. So yeah. Decent numbers all round. Jay Vine looked really good. Um, then we go on the day after, which actually was kind of harder than you expected um, in terms of uh, the finish. It was in Wollonga, but it wasn't Wollonga Hill. Uh, so we will try and find Brian Kokar's data because that would be interesting to have a look. 
uh, because he actually had a really good performance, his first World Tour win, which everyone is going mental about because they didn't realise. He almost won one, I think, in 2016, but uh, against Kittle, but he didn't. But if we just look at the sprint, obviously the sprint is kind of like irrelevant because a lot of the stuff is before, but you can see a thousand watts for 22 seconds is very impressive, um, but it kind of gets better and better if you actually look at this. 15 seconds, 1100 watts, I mean, it's not much over 60 kilos, I don't think so. Very, very impressive from the young, the young French man, or maybe the old French man, but anyway, impressive result nonetheless uh, from them. And then we go actually to one of the last, the last stage, pretty much, which was stage five. Um, I don't think I'm saying anything, no. Stage five, which was a bit of an anti-climax in some ways, but it finished up Mount Lofty. You can see they're just kind of doing laps. So they went up um, the freeway. Um, and then, yeah, after that, um, they finished on the final climb. It was kind of hard, but like Ben O'Connor, I think, had a good result on this stage. But you can see the main one is just like the last minute or 10 was like done at 500 watts. That was a really hard bit. If you look here, like two minutes, 550 again, like towards the end. So it was definitely hard. Um, if we look at the results, Ben O'Connor did have a good result. It was the only one really where he stayed basically the same time as Yates and Jay Vine. Um, but yes, some weird results like Sven Eric Beastrom doing well. But yeah, like decent level again, you can see like not insignificant. This last drag, 5.6 for for 16 minutes is pretty strong as well. So yeah, what's the conclusion? I guess levels decently high. J Vine looks like on nuclear level. Um, but again, it's it's hard to really read into anything because you don't know like how much intensity they've done and everything else. But anyway, level of the tour deadline is pretty big. Tomorrow I should have a video about what I um I like Comunita Valenciana GP. Um, which should be good. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.